Hello everyone and welcome to my latest how-to series, Arcade Building 102. You'll of course remember I did a Arcade Building 101. This is going to be a four-part series and this marks part one. We are going to be discussing hardware and software, which basically just means we're turning this into this, otherwise known as emulation. Before we get started, you need to know what your budget is. I calculate that this project is going to cost somewhere between four to six hundred dollars. Of course, that depends on if you want a full-sized arcade or not. You should try as best you can to utilize things you already have within your house. Uh, things like a spare flat screen television, an older PC, some computer speakers, a mouse and keyboard, things like that. That way your costs are greatly reduced. If you are not familiar with LetGo or OfferUp, you owe it to yourself to check out these services and use them, especially if you want to save yourself some money on this build. If you look around your house and you are unable to find an older computer like the ones I'll be describing, search through LetGo and OfferUp using your cell phone and try to find a deal. You may surprise yourself. There are two routes we can go. Route 1 is the premium route. We're looking for a desktop PC pre-installed with Windows 10 an i5 processor and at least 8 gigabytes of RAM. If we go this route you'll need to set aside an extra $50 to pay for some really exceptional software that we'll be using. With Route 2 we're looking for an older Dell Optiplex or something comparable with a Core 2 Duo or a Core 2 Quad processor and about 2 to 4 gigs of RAM. No hard drive is necessary and Windows is not required. I have units with both of these options and they both play all of my retro games perfectly. The only difference is Route 1 offers a flashier presentation when the arcade is idle. I know for some people an arcade is much more than just somewhere where you can play games. Some people like to have their arcade on at all times because it's a cornerstone of their entertainment room. So if that's you if that I'm describing then Route 1 is probably where you want to go. Just for the sake of time I'm going to focus on Route 1. If you would like to go with Route 2, I will leave a link in the description box to ETA Prime's video on how to install Botocera, a Linux-based all-in-one emulation station. When you're done watching his walkthrough, you can return for parts 2, 3, and 4 of my arcade building tutorial. Alright, first things first, we're going to download and install a one-stop shop emulator, basically. A collection of emulators, that's RetroArch. First, we need to make sure we install the right version. To do that, you need to go to your file explorer, go to my computer, this PC, click properties, and you'll see that you know we're working with a 64-bit operating system. So what we're going to do is go to the 64-bit installer. Uh, you can download it if you want, but I mean, it just adds extra steps, like unzipping the files. So you go to the installer, make sure you go through all the prompts, but before we do that, we have to make sure that um, when we're prompted, we create a separate file folder for, uh, for our stuff because the def default file folder path is garbage and it actually can be hidden sometimes in Windows 10. So make sure you change that uh, file folder path to something that you're going to remember uh, so you can go back to it later on because you'll have to do that. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm going into my, into my C drive. And basically what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create, um, there's going to be a file folder called emulation, and there I'm going to have another file folder, of course, with the install that's going to be RetroArch. When RetroArch is done installing, make sure that you, you'll, you'll be prompted to install the DirectX plugin. Just agree to it, go through that process, and then we're done on this end. For step two, we're going to install MAME. This is an arcade emulator, um, and RetroArch is perfectly capable of emulating arcade games as well. But the, the problem is that we have to match our ROM set to the version of MAME that we have. So if you find arcade ROMs, if you find a ROM set, make sure that that ROM set version matches whatever version of MAME you're going to download. 
So for example, the last ROM set that I have belongs to the uh, .200 version of MAME. So that's what I'm looking for here and I'm going to download or run the 64-bit installer for that exact version. Now once again, I want my install path to be within that emulation folder. It just sort of helps me to, to keep it that way so that way when I have to go back for various reasons, especially with, when using LaunchBox later on, it just makes it so much easier to navigate. All right, so now that it's done installing, I want to go back through the file folder structure and I want to show you um, some places that you'll have to be familiar with because you'll have to come back to it. So I'm going to go into the main folder and the first thing I want to point out is where the actual application is. You can see there it's an application file. Then also there is a ROMs file folder. You need to know that is where your arcade ROMs are going to go. They're going to go in two places, but you need to put them there first. So now you need to go to wherever you have your ROMs, whether it's on a USB drive or, or somewhere else on your computer. You're going to copy all those files and you're going to move them into the main folder under ROMs. And once you get there, you'll know, you'll know you're in the right place because there's a file, um, a text document that looks like that, which is basically just a readme document that says place ROMs here. Now just as a matter of convenience, I'm going to go ahead and make a create a shortcut and put that on my desktop for both MAME and RetroArch. And you can see there that I've already done so for RetroArch. Now you should know that RetroArch will not you know, emulate games right out of the gate. You have to download what are called cores. Just think of your systems like Super Nintendo and Sega Genesis as a core. Now we are going to install, download and install LaunchBox. This is what is referred to as a front end and basically what it does is just it organizes all of your games and it collects videos and box art and manuals and just puts you know everything in a nice neat little package and it helps to sell your arcade as a professional commercial looking product. So you're going to type your email address in the box above that's basically going to send you a link for the actual download so check your email. So I've clicked on the link through my email I've downloaded it I'm running through the install process and I'm going to go ahead and change the file folder path for the install. So here we are, LaunchBox is booted up, I've finished installing it, and now I'm going to go through the tools, I need to add my emulators, and I need to manage my platforms. So I'm going to go to add, and the first one I think I'm going to add is MAME. Now this is where it comes in handy knowing where your file folder path was, uh, because you need to know where the application actually exists in order to link it to LaunchBox. So I go to the application path, I go to my emulation folder, and I'm going to find the actual app, uh, application. This is of course going to be associated with all arcade games. Click OK. Now what we need to do is we need to add RetroArch. Now RetroArch is, is associated with many different uh, platforms. So I also, am, right now I'm finding the application path. So I gotta do that. Now I gotta go to associated platforms. Now this is where I find my core files. Uh, it, it will tell you there um, towards the to the right what the actual core is. Now here I'm back in RetroArch and I'm going to the main menu in settings and I'm going to load a core then down, uh, download a core. And you can see here I found Atari 2600 Stella that is supported by LaunchBox so I went ahead and downloaded it. Now if I go back to LaunchBox and I go back to that previous menu and under tools and manage emulators I can make sure that I have enabled um, the Atari 2600 as an associated platform of RetroArch. Now you'll just repeat this process for whatever ROMs you have. 
which will of course dictate which systems you have, which then will dictate which cores you need to download. Now we need to add our ROMs and we need to of course add all the metadata, artwork and videos. So I'm going to add a, an entire folder that I have already of ROMs that I have in my emulation folder. I've already copied those from a USB drive. So I'm going to use the Atari 2600 as an example. I got to go to an associated platform, of course, Atari 2600. Next, this is associated with, of course, RetroArch. I'm going to copy the files into the LaunchBox file folder structure. And here's all the stuff that I can download. I want to narrow it down because otherwise I've got a beefy internet connection, but I'm not about to, you know, download every bit of information. So I'm going to limit it to the cart art, um, the box art, front and back, the clear logo. You definitely want the clear logo for the, um, the little flywheel thing um, to go through the games. It's kind of cool. And you probably want videos. You could do cinematic videos, um, theme videos through LaunchBox, which are great. Or you can actually get an Emu Movies account, which I have, um, and you can get just you know gameplay footage on its own, which also looks really nice with the the clear logo flywheel um, on the left or right hand side. So, so I'm gonna come through here, leave the options the same, and it's going to go ahead and load all the ROMs that I have. I can see there. I'll click finish, and it'll start sorting through. They'll start scraping, is what we call it in the emulation community. It'll start to scrape all the metadata and then put that into LaunchBox. So we're going to fast forward to see what that looks like. And there you have it. There's all our box art. Now the videos, clear logos and things, those are, you know, you can right click on the games and access those things. But really they are accessible in LaunchBox Big Box, which is the premium format of LaunchBox. But it's... A license you'll have to pay $50 but it's a lifetime license and it's well worth it so I strongly recommend that you do that this is what will be the end result this is the front end of your arcade and how your your games will be organized uh, this is a theme a platform theme by Viking nostalgia it's accessible through launchbox big box I'm going to show you all how to do that um, when we get to our finishing touches video, so make sure you subscribe to the channel stay tuned We still got three more parts to this thing. I'll catch you guys next time